is fascism. It is a form of government where the powers of the government is centered on one single person who becomes an absolute dictator. Now, characteristics of fascism. One, it does not accommodate opposition. No one is allowed to oppose. No organization is allowed to stand in the position to the sitting government. Again, government controls every aspect of state life. And finally, the leader is the source of all laws. The next form of government in this category is totalitarianism. And just like fascism, it is the form of government in which all aspects of life is controlled by the government. Characteristics of totalitarianism. The government have the monopoly of weapons. Second, just like in fascism, opposition is not allowed. The state is governed by an official ideology. And this ideology governs every member of the governing body. Now, let us talk about types and characteristics of government. Earlier, we talked about forms of government. Where we mentioned feudalism, fascism, totalitarianism, and what have you. Now, we shall be concentrating on types of government. As we talk about these types of government, we shall equally look at their characteristics or features. We shall now start with the unitary system of government. It is a type of government where there is only one single central authority. Example is in Britain, and of course, such system of government was practiced in Ghana under Nkrumah. Features of the unitary system of government. In the unitary system of government, there is only one source of authority. The question of succession does not arise in this system of government because the powers of the government is set down in the center, in the middle. Other component parts of the government do not have constitutional powers which would have allowed them to succeed or break off or separate. Again, that is the next feature of the system of government is no constitutional division of power between the center and local government bodies. Now, of course, that is one of the major features of the unity system of government. There is no division of power between the center and the component regions of the government. There are a number of advantages of this system of government. And these advantages are what we want to mention. We have three of them. We shall be considering them one at a time. The first is that it reduces financial expenses. The government will not have to worry about spending money, taking care of other bodies. Second, uniform and systematic development. Every component part of a unitary system of government develops systematically and in a uniform pattern. The next is decisions are quickly taken. The government of the day will not have to liaise with other component parts of the government or other regions of the government for a decision to be taken. The next type of government is the federal government. Unlike the unitary system of government, it is a system of government where the constitution provides for the distribution of power between the center and other component parts of the government or of the state. Example of this system of government is the United States of America and of course Nigeria. Let us talk about the reason for federating, the reason for adopting the federal system or type of government. One, this type of government brings government to the grassroots. Yes, if the government is centered in the middle, there is no guarantee that every member of the society will be carried along because the seat of power, as a matter of fact, will be very, very far from those at the grassroots level. The second reason for federating is fear of domination of the minority by the majority. The minority group of every society is always in constant dread and fear of the majority group. 
So what federation does is to actually allow this minority group to be ruled by their own people and in their style. The next reason for, re for federating is ethnic diversity. In a country like Nigeria, where you have manifold ethnic groups, it is very difficult to take care of all of these ethnic groups and articulate all their wants and requests in a unity system of government, for instance. But the federal system of government allows every ethnic group to be ruled according to their way and culture and tradition. Characteristics of the federal system of government. One, the constitution defines powers exercised by the center, by the center and of course the component part of the government. The next feature or characteristic of the federal system of government is that the legislature is bicameral. Which means, have, for instance, in Nigeria, where we have the House of Senate and the House of Representatives making up the National Assembly, that is the legislature. That is the future of the federal system of government. The next future is supremacy of the Constitution. The Constitution is supreme. And finally, the federal system of government has a rigid constitution. A constitution whose amendment is not as easy as the amendment of an unwritten constitution. There are a number of merits of the federal system of government. And we have three here, and we shall be talking about the three. First, it makes dictatorship difficult. How? Of course, since the powers of the state as a shrine in the constitution is divided among the central government and of course its component parts. It becomes too difficult for the central government to have all the powers that could intoxicate it and thus make it a dictatorial government. The next is it encourages healthy rivalry. And finally, it makes for political participation. Yes, those at the grassroots could participate in politics of their local government. Of course, those at the state level have the opportunity to participate. Talking about encouraging healthy rivalry, every state is allowed to develop at its pace. Now, there are a number of the merits of the federal type of government. We have three. First, it is very expensive to run, unlike the unitary system of government. Second, it would be too slow to implement government policy because every component of the government would have to articulate their worries, their wants, their requests and desires and such requests, desires would have to be brought to the table before the federal government takes any decision or the central government takes any decision. And thirdly, it is difficult to amend the constitution because of course, as we said earlier, one of the future of the federal system of government is a rigid constitution. The next type of government is presidential system of government. In this type of government, all the executive powers are vested on one person called the president. We shall now look at the characteristics of the presidential system of government. The executive authority lies with the president. Yes, the powers lies with the president. That's the executive power lies with the president. Second, Ministers are chosen by the president to form his cabinet. On winning the election, the president has the prerogative to choose people, members of the cabinet. And again, that's the third. The judiciary and members of the executive are not members of the legislature. In this type of government, members of the judiciary and members of the executive are different from members of the legislature. The number of advantages. One, fixed tenure of office. For instance, in Nigeria, just after four years, the life of a government expires and the life of another government begins. The next advantage is decisions are made faster. Yes. What about disadvantages? It may lead to dictatorship. Ministers, that's the second advantage, could be dismissed arbitrarily by the president since, of course, he is the one who appoints them. And thirdly, any grievous mistake by the president may cause disaster, since all the powers lie with him. The next is the parliamentary system of government. 
The parliamentary system of government is otherwise known as the cabinet system of government. This is a system in which members of the executive are also members of the parliament. There is no clear cut.